All right, welcome back. In this video, just going over the method on how to solve basic kinetics problems and gonna do a quick example in this video to you just to illustrate how it works. So for basic kinetics problems, they are all, uh, they are all based around Newton's second law, which is just F equals M A. We're gonna always come back to this expression every single time. Um, and the simplest examples of these types of problems are when we're just looking at a mass with some forces acting on it and we typically want to find out what the acceleration of that mass is. So one simple uh, example would be like a block on a, you know, sliding on the floor that is subjected to some applied force and would also have friction acting on it, or maybe something a little bit more complicated but still very simple, like the same situation just on an inclined plane. So in both of these situations, we have more forces acting on the mass than just the applied force. Uh, we're going to have friction opposing it. Uh, we're going to have normal force and we're going to have its weight. And same in the inclined plane version, you know, the weight is going to be going down. We're gonna to wanna to break that into components that match the, di the dimensions uh, that we're working in. Not dimensions, like uh, the angles that we're working in. So we would call that Y prime and we would call that X prime. We'd be looking for W Y prime and W X prime. Uh, and then again, there would be some friction. Not entirely sure which direction the friction would be going in this situation, but it would be going somewhere. Um, and what we're doing in these situations, again here, we're also breaking this into Fx and Fy. Um, so what we're doing in these problems in pursuit of uh, finding the sum of forces equal to Ma, so in situations where we have more than one force, it's more actually appropriate to write the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. Um, we basically want to identify the direction of acceleration. So in this case, it's going to be going like that. Uh, in this case, we don't know. I drew friction going up, so let's say maybe acceleration is going that way or something. What you want to do is you want to identify the direction of acceleration and then sum up all of the forces that are acting in that direction for this sum of forces corresponding to the direction of acceleration. And often you'll have to calculate all the other forces as well, like... Um, you know, the normal force and weight, they are perpendicular to the direction of acceleration, but we need them in order to find the force of friction and stuff like that. So let's just go through an example now. We'll give some numbers to this, this first one here where the block is on the horizontal surface. Let's say that the mass is equal to 35 kilograms. Let's say that the force is equal to 250 newtons. The kinetic coefficient of friction, let's say that's 0.5. Um, we'll say that the force is acting 30 degrees up from the horizontal, and we're going to be looking for acceleration. So let's first break down F into its components, Fx and Fy. Fx is just simply going to be 250 cos 30, which is going to be 216.5 newtons. Fy is 250 sine 30, and that is just 100, 125 Newtons. Um, from here, let's draw a free body diagram, I guess, that more clearly represents everything that's not really on the original diagram. So we've got Fx coming out like this. It's equal to 216.5 Newtons. We've got Fy pulling up on it um, at 125 Newtons. We're going to have the force of the weight, W. We're also going to have a normal force from the surface that it's on, and we're going to have the friction coming out like that, opposing the direction of acceleration, which will definitely be straight to the right. So for W, that's just equal to mg, which is equal to 35 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared, which gives us 343.35 newtons. We can label that on. And then to find n, the normal force, really what we have to do is take the sum of forces in the y direction. We can write this as equal to ma in the spirit of kinetics, but really this is equal to zero because we know that the acceleration in this case is going to be zero. We can see that the weight here, 343, is bigger than the Fy, which I should label that. Um, so there is going to be a normal force, and it's all going to net out to zero. So the sum of forces, we have 125 going up, plus the normal force, minus W, which is going down, which is 343.35. So we can just rearrange that, and we'll get N is equal to 
218.35 newtons. And now that we have N, we can find out what the force of friction is because friction is just going to be equal to mu k times N. Mu k was 0 0.5, N is 218.35, so it's just half that. And our friction is going to be then 109.175 newtons. So now when we're just going to look for what the acceleration of this mass is, the acceleration is definitely going to the right. The force imbalance you can see is Fx is 216. The friction is 109. So the, in the horizontal uh, direction, there's an imbalance to the right. And in the vertical direction, it netted out to zero. So accelerating is acceleration is definitely to the right. So what we can do is we can write uh, the sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. This is referring to the sum of uh, the positive direction that we're referring to in this case is matching the direction of acceleration. So Fx is in the same direction, so we're going to have that as a positive value, 216.5 newtons. We're going to subtract the friction force. You know what, let's even write it with the variables first. So we just have Fx minus friction force is equal to ma. So Fx is 216.5 newtons minus the friction because it's going in the opposite direction of acceleration it is 109.175 newtons times the mass which was 35 kilograms times the unknown acceleration we can just do that subtraction so we have 107.325 newtons divide both sides by 35 kilograms and that leaves us with a and if you just do that division we find that acceleration is 3.07 meters per second squared to the right. So that's really the simplest example of a problem of this type, solving a basic kinetic problem. Sometimes they can also ask for other information related to kin kinematics, like how far would the block translate um, during a certain period of time if it started with an initial velocity. Um, no, knowing the acceleration, you just plug the acceleration that we've just calculated here um, into those kinematic equations, and then you'll be able to take these problems even further if you're asked to. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, the only other thing worth mentioning is in when we're talking about acceleration uh, with these kinetics problems, acceleration has to be referenced from an inertial reference frame. Um, basically, that's just an inertia, uh, you know, a reference frame that's not accelerating. It's either fixed or it's translating at a constant velocity. But for these types of problems, when we're just looking at blocks sliding on the floor and stuff like that, we'll just take the floor or the Earth in general as our inertial reference frame, and uh, we'll be good to go from there. So don't worry too much about that, but probably worth actually mentioning it in this video. But yeah, um, that's a quick introduction to these. You're always going to be coming back to... Newton's second law, right here. When in doubt, just write it, and, uh, and you're always going to be using that. So with that, uh, uh, we'll see you in the next video, and we'll start talking about introducing pulleys into these types of problems as well.